In this video clip, I will explain various scenarios for the deployment of Adix5 professional storage platforms. I will talk about hosting, customer side storage platforms, nested platforms, and the design considerations for bandwidth and disk space. Let's begin by taking a look at the components of a storage platform. In a redundant configuration, the primary storage platform will consist of an account server. This holds backup group and account configuration settings, including the amount of space per group or account and to which storage server backups are stored on. It is used for authentication during a backup or restore. The account server uses a SQL database that is backed up automatically. A slave account server can be set up as redundancy for the primary account server. Report server, with standard and enterprise reporting available, Storage Server, this is responsible for managing backups, restores, month-end roll-ups and off-site mirroring. The Storage Server can also be set to perform HSM archives of older backup dates to a different medium such as cost-effective disk. The console is used to administer the Account Server, Storage Server and Report Server and is also used to create custom client SE and DLs. Lastly, the Web Access Server. This is a web portal that enables you to log into your backup account to access and restore your data from any web browser. All of these components can be installed on the same physical server and represent the primary storage platform. Prerequisites include MSSQL and .NET 3.5 Service Pack 1. Additional components of the Addix 5 architecture can be installed in a modular fashion to provide account server redundancy additional storage, and mirror storage servers. Take a look at this real-world example. I have a network with a number of workstations and servers. Attix 5 supports a variety of operating systems including server edition clients for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Desktop and laptop edition clients are available for Windows and Mac clients. Various server plugins are also available, including Exchange Server, Exchange Single Item Recovery, SQL, SharePoint, VMware, and VSS. Please see the Addix5 website for a complete list of supported clients and plugins. My storage platform is installed on the local area network and the clients transmit their backed up data over the network to the storage server. I also have some home workers with company laptops that need to be backed up. By creating the required rules on my firewall, I'm able to publish my account server and storage server to the internet or via VPN and make them available to my remote workers for backup. All of the data is encrypted and transmitted over SSL. The typical ports used for this configuration are TCPIP port 443 for my account server and 8443 for my storage server. But if you have more than one public facing IP address, then both services can be set up to use port 443. It is also recommended to use DNS names when registering the services. This will minimize configuration changes if your IP address changes at any time. In order to provide an off-site copy of my data and redundancy for my storage platform, I have several options including installing a storage platform at the second physical location and mirroring my information. This would be suitable if I had a remote branch office where I could locate my storage platform. This is known as nested storage platform architecture. I am able to backup data at each site to the local storage platform and then replicate that data to the storage platform at the remote site. This ensures that I have a copy of all of my data at each site while I am able to take advantage of fast local area network backup and restores. I am able to control the mirroring bandwidth using the mirror throttle map. If I did not want to invest in the required hardware for this solution, I could approach an Addix5 hosted service provider who already has the entire infrastructure in place and use their services. Let's take a look at how an Addix5 hosted service provider might have their storage platform set up. Typically, a primary storage platform would be located at the data center featuring backup power generators, cooling, secure access and high availability access to the internet. This primary storage platform would replicate its data 
to a slave account server and storage server located at a different physical data center. Using this model, you could expand your data capacity requirements as and when you need to. Your hosted service provider is able to add additional storage servers as data capacity increases. The use of .NET for the version 6 x 5 storage platform has improved multi-threading support. This, together with the storage platform's ability to address more RAM due to 64-bit support, makes it possible to access more disk space and run more processes simultaneously on a single storage server. It is worth mentioning that customers who would like to take full advantage of deduplication of files should plan for that during storage server deployment. Here are some tips on making the most out of single instance storage. Storage server disk volumes should be formatted with NTFS file system. Deduplication occurs on individual accounts as well as between backup accounts with data on the same storage server. Storage server deduplication can also take advantage of data that is mirrored to that storage server. To summarize, storage servers with more backup accounts and more data capacity will make best use of deduplication. Another important consideration regarding your storage platform architecture is your available bandwidth. Moving large amounts of data over a slow internet connection is not always practical. Here are some considerations on how to plan for this. Client-side features include a backup feature called a snapshot backup. If you are backing up a client for the first time and there is a large amount of data to move, this is useful. The backup can be done to an external disk or DVD, for example, and then uploaded onto the storage server. A similar process can be used for a restore. This is called snapshotting. It may be best to locate a storage server on the local area network for backups as shown earlier. On configuring the mirror for the first time, the compressed data on the storage platform can be sent to an external drive and transported to the mirror server in a similar process to a snapshot backup. Once that is uploaded onto the mirror server, only the changes will be sent over the slow internet connection. The mirror or bandwidth throttle map is a useful tool to regulate bandwidth use during the day and then to allow additional bandwidth use during off-peak or out-of-office hours. The Addix 5 Backup Pro suite is highly configurable and for more architectural options please contact Addix 5 or an Addix 5 reseller. I hope that you have found this demonstration useful. For other demonstrations, explanations and product highlights from Addix 5 please go to www.addix5.com or email us at info at addix5.com.